Hi friends! I'm very excited today to be exploring and talking with you about one of my very favorite fairy tales, Beauty and the Beast, also known as La Belle et la Bête in French. Uh, this is originally a French story, if you didn't know that, if you've only ever seen the, um, the Disney version from either the more recent live action or the early 90s animated film. It, it, you may be surprised to know that it's originally a French fairy tale and it was written by a, a woman named Madame de Villeneuve back in the early, late 1600s and later rewritten and kind of shortened, uh, abridged, and republished by um, another author. And it's, it, it's quite different from the French version or from the Disney version they, there there are some things they certainly took uh, the, the bones of the story to create the modern version but there are some really important differences that I wanted to talk about and I feel like this photo from the film really encapsulates those differences it just in one still shot um, it's a black and white film it was uh, it was it was produced in 1946 right after World War II you know, France was in, still in mourning. They lost a lot of people during that war and there was just kind of a lack of hope. And uh, Cocteau's version of La Belle et la Bête, uh, historians, if you know anything about French cinema, <laughs> historians have kind of um, dubbed it as this, you know, renewing of hope for the French people after World War II. And it, I just think that's really beautiful. Um, anyway, so in this version, uh, and I'm always going to be talking about spoilers, so if you'd rather see this version first, maybe pause my video and go watch the uh, original film. They have it on HBO Max at the time of me posting this, and I believe it's also streaming on a couple of free services as well. So if you want to go see the differences for yourself, go for it. But um, anyway, continuing on with spoilers. This version does have um, it, um, an enchanted castle. It does have a um, you know woman who stays stays with this lion bear looking beast and who's really a man and she doesn't know that. And so all of kind of the bare bones are there, but the dialogue and the uh, kind of peripheral characters and a lot of the other just undercurrents of how they treat each other is quite different from both of our Americanized versions. So our story starts with her family. Uh, she has a merchant father and just like in in the films and then she has two older sisters who are actually very similar to the sisters in Cinderella. Uh, very vain and kind of ugly on the inside even though they're pretty on the outside and a brother who isn't doesn't treat Belle badly but he has a gambling problem which hurts the family as a whole because he's constantly losing their family money and there's also a peripheral character named Avnal which is uh, he's a character very similar to the Disney's version of Gaston he's not quite as vile <laughs> he does uh, genuinely care about Belle but he is very aggressive and he's very um, he, he's kind of just he's annoying in a couple of different ways eh, just in the in a annoyingly brutish sense of just like you're being too extra man just <laughs> you're being you're being too selfish here um that that is off-putting and so bell he he's obsessed with bell wants to marry her and she's like no I don't, I don't like you like that let's just be friends and you know so her dad is off merchanting and when he returns his ships are lost in a storm and at the same time her brother has lost all of their furniture and everything else due to his gambling problems and so um, their dad is coming home and gets lost in a storm on the way finds the beast castle uh, is welcomed inside by doors that open by themselves and tables that serve him and in the movie it's a little unnerving because you have these human hands coming out of the walls and out of the table and it's very uh it, it there is a creepiness layer to it that you don't have with like the animated 
version of that. You know, they didn't have CGI in 1946, so they they used kind of humans in the way that they needed to to make these things look enchanted. And so the statues move and that kind of thing. And so, you know, he has dinner, everything's fine, and then he's going to leave, and he goes to grab a rose for Belle, because that was the one thing she asked for. Her sisters were asking for lease and parasols and things like that, and she just wanted a rose. And so he feels bad. She's the only one she, he can bring something back for. And the beach, beast catches him in the garden. Um, what the dad doesn't realize is that he, uh, stealing the roses are actually harmful to the beast harmful to uh, his magical power because in this version the beast actually is he he exists in this world where he has to she even talks about it later in the film that he has to behave and follow the rules of the magic of the world but he also commands a great deal of magic as well and um so you know he tells him you you're stealing my rose i you're not allowed to leave my, my property. And um, he's, he's going to end him. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, he kind of falls to his knees. He's like, take 15 minutes to prepare yourself. You're about to meet your maker. And he's like, no, please, I have, I have you know, kids at home. And they're grown kids, they're adult kids, but they still live with him. It's like, I, you know, I have a family at home. I have a business. I have all of these things. Is there any way we can work out a deal? And the beast is like, you can go home to your family, um, but you know you have to come right back, and you know d deal with me basically. <laughs> and so he goes home, tells the tells the kids what's going on, and Belle takes it on her person. She decides that she is going to take his place, which is quite different. That's the first really big divergence from the films. Is you know she goes to the castle and there's this big issue of like taking places there and this one she just takes off on the magical horse that he came on takes her to his castle and um, starts exploring the castle until you know she he comes upon her and she gets scared and faints and he picks her up and puts her in a fury he as he's like transporting her into her room she is suddenly dressed in this gorgeous beautiful finery and he lays her in the beautiful bed and and um as he's walking out she wakes up and they have some interaction a little bit and he's basically just like cowers under her glance and he's like oh please don't look at me in the eye it hurts me you know the way you're looking at me um just know i'm not gonna bother you i'll only come see you at 7 p.m. every night for us to dine together and and so uh you know don't 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 mind me basically and so the next time we see them and it's most of the conversation they have in the whole movie there's a lot it, that time period i think a lot of the films were still quite visual in nature and didn't have a whole lot of dialogue um and there's not a whole lot of dialogue with the beast in the mo in the book as well in the original books so they go to dinner and or she goes to dinner and he comes in uh very quietly and he's like do you mind if i watch you dine you know it's not again it's not him screaming at her through a door and demanding that you know she join him for dinner and blah 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 he is so reverent of her and respectful and like she's the most beautiful creature he's ever seen and he never wants to do anything to upset her it's very sweet and so you know she's she's sitting down and when he asks her that she says uh you're, you're the master of the castle you can do what you want and he was like oh no, no 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 there is no master here but you and you know i'm gonna follow your lead on this <laughs> and so um they they have some exchanges and he's telling her you know i i I have a good heart. I know I, but I look like a monster. Um, and she says, you know, there are a lot of men who are more monstrous than you, but they cash, they hide it well. And that's one of my favorite interactions is their whole first dinner scene because so much of it is him 
He's like this broken warrior kind of archetype character in that version. And he's just trying to, <laughs> he's just trying to make her happy, honestly. It's like her presence, he's terrified of her. He doesn't want her to look at him in a certain way because it, it part of his curse is it physically pains him when people look at him like a monster. And, you know, their relationship kind of evolves talking and taking walks in the garden and kind of a very, very, very traditional um, court, courting relationship and which is also very romantic in a, in a old, old world kind of way. And they have another interaction later where, and it's the only interaction where their tempers are heightened and he had taken off into the woods after they took a walk because he had gotten distracted by a deer <laughs> and his his beast like instincts took over and he wanted to go hunt the deer he doesn't eat regular food he he hunts like a lion or a bear does and so he comes in covered in blood and he's at her door and it freaks her out and she's like where have you been why are you covered in blood and, and he's he just keeps saying forgive me and she's like forgive you for what you you didn't do anything to me and and he's like for for being a beast because he's he just feels he can't control these urges he's got as far as hunting goes and he knows that he can't please her in the way that he wants to and um and she she gets mad at him for this and she's like how dare you say those words you know to me just they're beneath you go clean yourself up you know she's very like you know I think more highly of you than that and I really like that from her towards him and so they just have the the sweetest interaction and eventually of course her father gets sick which is similar to the Disney version and she you know he gives her a key to a, a little pavilion that has all of his power in it and riches in it and he's like you know I'm giving you this and if you don't return within a week it, it's going to kill me and so I need you know just just know that, that if you don't want to come back here, <laughs> you don't have to. I, you won't have to worry about me anymore, and you can wait a little longer and then come and get all these riches, and your family will be fine, and you don't have to worry about me, but I'm trusting you that you're not going to let this terrible thing happen to me. And so um, she does care about him at this point, and she's just like, no, it's not. I, I just want to make sure my dad's going to be okay. And they go, um, and there's this one part where where, you know, she sees her dad and she starts crying and her he gives her all these things to make her journey more comfortable. His glove makes her travel easily and um, the mirror so she can see things, you know, the way that she needs to. And when she cries over her or her dad because he's very ill, her tears fall and they turn into diamonds. And she tells... Her, her dad, you know, he's like, oh my goodness, what's happening? What, what is this? And she says, see, these are from the beast. It's part of his power. He sent these through me to heal you because he knows I love you so much. And so even that, he's like got her back so, so much trying to, you know, make sure she's happy. And so um, finally, the, in her, there's some <laughs> manipulations that happen with her sisters and Avenal and all of these things. They're trying to force her to stay and convince her to stay, and it's a whole, it's a whole drama. <laughs> but eventually, she does make her way back to the beast, and um, when he turns back into a human, he tells her that you know I couldn't tell you before or otherwise it wouldn't work, but my parents didn't believe in the the old forest spirits didn't believe in diane who diana um, like the goddess diana the roman goddess she was in the pavilion <laughs> and um you know her, my parents didn't respect them she they didn't believe in them and so for their faults they cursed she cursed me and um so that's how he came under the beast spell and you know, he's like, I just needed a loving look from someone. And that was, you know, not, not <laughs> a, like a fond look from someone, not that, 
you know, somebody fell in love with him or kissed him or anything like that. It was just that somebody saw him as a, a being, as a soul. And I think that's also very thoughtful in the storytelling as well, especially because, I don't know, the the multiple, and a lot of them are French, but all over the world there are folk tales talking about humans being turned into other creatures. And then the one person who sees through the physical to the mind of the person, this meeting of minds. There's another French fairy tale that I'm going to have to do a page about uh, called La Chatte Blanche. It's the, the white cat. <laughs> and it's kind of reversed because the woman in the story is a white cat. And, um, you know, a, a prince sees through her facade into her. And so these stories where the physical is removed, the physical attraction, the physical connection is removed, and people have to connect through the mind and through interests and emotions and um, just enjoying each other's company and coming to care and trust one another without the act of, um, you know, physical touch, is a story I think resonates with a lot of people, especially people who <laughs> are maybe more introverted or maybe more... Um, kind of in their head a lot because, or, or honestly just anybody who feels misunderstood. And I think that's why these stories maybe hold so much power. But I, I just wanted to share with you this version because it's by far my favorite version of the story. Um, just their treatment of each other is relationship goals, <laughs> you know? And it's it's just this beautiful, yeah, meeting of minds, and it's this beautiful, uh, you know, at one point, Avnal, before she goes back to rescue the beast, Avnal asks her, you know, do you, well, do you love him? And she said, no, but I, I'm very fond of him, and there's a difference. And, you know, even, of course, once he turns back into the prince, and she realizes that romantic love is possible, that's kind of, <laughs> that that's a, happily ever after immediately kind of thing, but she, she cares about him enough to, um, you know, she's a good enough person, of course, to want to save him in general, if not let him die because she's gone too long, but also that she just enjoys his company. And I think, especially with a very fast paced culture that we live in, enjoying another person's co company is really a gift and something important. Anyway, so I hope you liked my little analysis there. If you've seen that version, please tell me in the comments because I want to hear your thoughts on it. And if you have thoughts about the Disney version, put that in the comments because this is a very supercharged, like emotionally charged story. I feel like some people hate this, this story and some people love it for various reasons. So I'm definitely curious. And for those of you who want to help support this channel and receive monthly printable options from me, as well as a little parcel of handmade and vintage ephemera from me, you can join Ephemera Club at the link uh, in the description box, as well as on the screen. And I want to go ahead and thank my Ephemera Club for supporting me this month. Shana, Krista, Donna, Cindy, Abigail, Kathleen, Joanna, Rebecca, Sasha, Patsy, Teresa, Effie, Kim, Emily, Carly, Carrie, Leprechaun Mom, Tracy, Britt, Alicia, Kenna, Rachel, Denise, W, Jennifer, Ariel, and Rasha. Really appreciate you guys. And if you're curious about any of the techniques, the tools, the ephemera, anything that I used in this video, please comment it and also check the description box. I try to list everything that I use if I can. Um, but I realize it's kind of pulled from all over and it's hard to hunt a lot of websites. So feel free to ask me and I will try to remember I got various things and I hope you have a wonderful week. If you make it to the end, please, please comment something, just an emoji or a couple of emojis about Beauty and the Beast. If you don't have any, um, just general thoughts about it, <laughs> I'd like to have a little, a little discussion in the, in the comments, but if you just want to leave me a crown or a stack of books or a bow or something like that, that's fine. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for joining me today 
and we'll see you next week. Thanks, friends. Bye.